What is up? It is Chris from Legion Games. This week we are going to descent into space for your board game news roundup. Let's take a look. So in case you were unaware, right now digital spiel is going on since we can't do it in person because the pandemic is still raging. And why is that a big deal? It's because of the announcements that come out of gaming conventions like this. And the first big one, FFG has decided to step into the realm and make a huge splash, as usually Spiel is about more of your typical Euro uh, worker placement type of games and that side of things. And they have officially announced the new edition of Descent, Descent Legends of the Dark, as a new edition of their classic dungeon crawler, and you can see that it is going all out there. First off, this box looks amazing. I love the color scheme. The other thing that stands out on this page, whoosh, 175 bucks for this thing. Now, I have to wonder, is it going to be worth it? When you have something on the market like a Gloomhaven or even the upcoming Frosthaven where you're getting for 100 bucks, what does it do comparison-wise? Now with this, they are taking you back to Terranoth. This is your co-op dungeon crawler from FFG. People have been waiting for this one for years. They're already including the fact that there is a free companion app that's going to be integrated. They say straight up, you're getting 16 quests. It's called the Blood and Flame Campaign. You're getting 3D terrain. You're getting 40 miniatures. Um, you're getting component after component after component. Is this third edition? It's not third edition, but it's kind of third edition. They're saying it basically to, so that you'll still buy second edition, in my opinion. Um, so that second edition completely isn't defunct. But they've said, you know, they're, they're redoing it from that side of things. Now, interestingly, they start showing the components. You start seeing some of the miniatures. But they say flat out that the core gameplay mechanics are not going to be changed, but they're also going to be refreshed so that there's new interpretations as well as 3D terrain. So you're going to have multi-level scenarios that are involved here. And if you go over to the Spiel page, you can actually see what one of these is going to look like from that side of things. So you can just kind of see these are a little bit of tiering here. Now, why it has to be tiering as opposed to just Marking it on a flat board, I'm I'm not sure I because I'm guessing that's part of where the extra cost is going to come in. So I don't know how I feel about that yet. Now it looks like the app is going to be required because right here they flat out say that the gameplay is going to be changed because you're introducing enemies that can adapt their strategy based on what's going on, as well as more complex status effects and triggers that are maintained all by the app. Now, in theory, I love everything I just said: adaptable strategy, adaptable AI complex status effects that you don't have to keep track of on a daily turn with tokens or chits or ups and downs. Yes, great. And things are triggered automatically based on you know where you are. I love it. Now, at the same time, I always worry about app integration, keeping things updated, the ease of being able to use it during the game. It's a, it's a real concern. You also worry about, are they going to keep up with the product? If this product does not do as well as they think it is, will you continue to be able to use it you know five years from now it seems like they have gone more of an integrated approach and i like what i'm seeing initially because it seems like they have studied the competition in that sense you have scenarios you have crafting you have shopping in your city you have upgrading of equipment so they've looked at what else is out there they have seen things of gloomhaven-esque frosthaven-esque and they have incorporated it into their own. Now, I hope they do something unique with it so it's not just a mirror image or a copy of what else is out there. Another sample of your miniatures. I'm not impressed by any of these renders, but they're renders, so who cares? Uh, you're getting six heroes to start out with. I'm not familiar with the Terranoff um, backstory and uh, mythos as much, so I can't speak to any of these. So, I mean, you're gonna see uh, plays off your, your stereotypical tropes in other uh, RPGs in that sense. Now, again, they're, they're playing off of the replayability factor, which is all the rage in games like this. So they are saying that you can choose your weapons, your armor, your consumables, or even your skills at the beginning of each quest. So you're having a lot of customization on a quest-by-quest -quest basis, not necessarily stuck with one uh, 
character trope the whole 16 quests. If you find that something does not work as well or you do not like it, you are not necessarily pigeonholed into the same character the whole time, making you want to, you know, sort of quit it prematurely, which again is a smart thing from a developer and a publisher standpoint. Now, the next thing they talk about is they talk about the turns being relatively fast. And I think with a game like this, with so many people, uh, quests that may be so long in nature is that it's got to be fast turn by turn. Otherwise, you're going to lose people to some of the competitors that are out there like Cthulhu, Meth, Death May Die, the others, Gloomhaven, where your turns can be much quicker in that sense. So you're moving, you're getting two actions. And so your abilities, uh, your, your skills, your ability to interact with the environment, they say. So I'm hoping you'll see something unique there. If you're going to give me a 3D environment, you better make it unique. You better give me something to do with it. I, I don't want to pay extra just from that side of things. Now, they talk about rolling dice again for your attacks. So some people are immediately going to be turned off by that. Again, as a dice roller, I love rolling dice. So that does not turn me off. Now, they go down and they actually seem to have adapted this. Uh, from one of their other properties, the Marvel Champions, you can see that they are flipping the card here in this illustration. So you have a different ability that you're going to be using depending on which side of the card you're choosing to use uh, during your turn. But you're limited by the amount of fatigue your character can get. So you're flipping your card in order to say basically refresh them or depending on which ability you want to use depending on the situation that you find yourself in. Now the next part, they actually talk about what you're going to be doing with your weapons and your abilities, and you're going to be able to flip these cards as well to ready them, and they're actually providing sleeves, so instead of having two weapons on your character sheet, and I think this is more from a space side of things, although they're saying it's from an ease of combat side of things, your ability to uh, manipulate which weapon you're using, and it appears that the attack die is what's going to be determined from your character, but how much damage it does and what effect it does is determined by which weapon you choose to use in this situation. And they even say that there's going to be crafting. So you get an ability to craft new weapons. They mention as well that skills are going to be the same way, switching between two complementary abilities uh, depending on which one is going to be better for the strategy and the tactics of the encounter that you're in. Now it appears that they have taken a little bit of what the Lord of the Rings game has done with the app of starting with a single tile and then sort of building it as you go, depending on, and so levels will have staircases, bookshelves, trees, treasure chests, barricades, and they say flat out here that it is not just decorative, which is exactly always my concern with something like this, because I am not one of those people that looks at Kickstarter products and says, oh, I need the 3D terrain that is just purely ornamental in nature. Take a tomb off of a shelf, you can open a chest, you can climb into the tree to scout and to get the advantages that it provides you. Now, do you actually have to have 3D terrain to do that? No, but it's an added immersive element. Now, the one thing I wonder about in a game like this, especially at the price point of $175, is are there going to be enough enemies in terms of the variability and in terms of not feeling like you're always slugging through the same guys like a zombie side-ish? This looks like all of them in here. So you're getting 11 different types because there are 34 miniatures here and I think there are like six heroes or something that you start with. Or are they going to use them very smartly and very selectively? Others where it is a slog and it is just a Hulk smash sort of moment rather than a little bit more uh, strategy, stealth, positioning. And so maybe we'll see a little bit more with that side of things if you're not going to give me as many enemies. And then, speaking of uh, the weapons and the crafting, there's a whole new crafting table. So it looks like a lot of this is going to be on the app, which, again, I wonder then where is the cost? If you're only getting 40 miniatures, that's, that's a big price point compared to a lot of the Kickstarters that you'll get, you know, almost for a dollar a mini. But it looks like you're going to have to actually be finding recipes. So it's not just as simple as do you have the components, it's do you have the recipe to unlock. So you may have a bunch of stuff, but you may not be able to make anything because you don't know what to make out of it. So why is this exciting? I mean, it's exciting even though it's not coming out until they say right here, second quarter of 2021, which is a far time away. It could be as far as necessarily June of 2021, so you're looking at almost eight months. But it's something new. It's a different twist on things. FFG puts out good products from a quality side of things for the most part, but you'll also know with a lot of their other products, this is not designed to be a one-off. This is designed to be a continually releasing new expansions, new content. And so you know that even though it's 175 bucks up front, you're gonna be probably shelling out equally that 
over the next course of 2021 because I can't imagine that putting this out in 2021, they don't have another product or expansion or two that would easily come before the end of 2021 as well to capitalize on it, to strike while the iron is hot, as they say. Next up, now this is interesting and I'm gonna just put this up on the screen here. This is ISS Vanguard. The official story trailer was just released I believe yesterday or the day before, to give us a little bit of background about what ISS Vanguard actually is. And this doesn't really um, give you a whole lot to go off of as the opening image. But essentially what happens is we as Earthlings get this message, we find out that it's been decoded in the DNA of every living creature, and we construct this ship to go to these coordinates that are found within this DNA. And the beginning of this video is actually this message that actually is explained at the very end of the video that when they get there, you see this spherical cloaked, uh, basically solar system that they find waiting for them that is basically lifeless and has been mined and destroyed and left abandoned. And as they're approaching, there is a sun that shoots them a message very similar to the first message in the coded DNA. And instead of this being their endpoint, which is what they thought it was, they are then sent coordinates all over the rest of the galaxy. And that is then where the game takes up as you are exploring all of those other signals and coordinates that were sent to the ISS Vanguard as you now captain the ISS Vanguard to go and explore and to find out more of the mystery of why this was sent in the first place, what this means, and what other mysteries that are going to go along with this. So now there's no official announce date on when it is actually going to be released on GameFound. Rumors, uh, speculation puts it more towards the November, December-ish. Me personally, I think it's gonna be towards the end of November because I think they're gonna wanna launch it before the Christmas season sort of hits, but it'll be interesting to see. And it's the first official game that's gonna be launching on their new crowdfunding site of GameFound. So it'll be a good litmus test for the market. Speaking of campaigns, Primal The Awakening. I've talked about this previously. Reggie Games, the guys out of Italy. This is Monster Hunter, the board game, non-official essentially. I love it. I'm a huge fan of this. This is the preview Kickstarter page that you can save to be notified when it launches. Just announced today during Spiel Digital that they are going to be launching sometime in January 2021. Now that comes as a big hype moment, but that also comes as a little bit of a disappointment because I think a lot of us were hoping that it would be launching later this month or, or into November even sometime, but hopefully even before the end of 2020. And now that does not appear to be the case, which unfortunately then means I doubt you're going to be seeing this game in your hands before probably sometime in the first quarter or two of 2022. Not like we don't have enough games to play in the meantime, but I think the other concerning factor is now you're going to be going up essentially against the actual Monster Hunter the board game from SFG, Steamforge Games, because they have announced that they're going to be doing it in sometime 2021. If there's going to be overlap, are they going to run head to head? What is the competition going to look like? because now you have a direct competitor in the same game, in the same market. And both of these are gonna be expensive. SFG has a very spotty track record with some of the games that they have put out in terms of the timing and the development. But if Horizon Zero Dawn is any indication, the gameplay actually appears to be improving and the reviews on the actual gameplay are very good. And so if they are improving every game from that sense, then you might actually have more of a rivalry or competition for funds than I would have projected even, you know, as recently as a month or two ago. So it'll be interesting to see how that unfolds. Speaking of deliveries, now I'm going to talk a little bit about the next section, just about a few uh, Kickstarter games that you should be aware that are probably going to start shooting up the hotness for various reasons that are in the process of being delivered over the next, you know, month or so. First up, is Dwellings of Elderville. So this is Luke Laurie's game, really nice guy, met him online, talked to him a few times, interacted with him. It's a Euro hybrid, very thematic, epic worker placement fantasy game. Uh, there are 16 different factions. And so this is sort of atypical in that sense. And it, it appealed to a lot of people on both sides because of all of those reasons. Now it's gonna be delivering sometime in the next month or so, they said. Now, why am I talking about it now? Well, you can see the standard Elder Veil pledge was $69. So just a price point to know. The Deluxe was $99. You're getting the miniatures, you're getting the insert, you're getting the wooden meeples. 
And then the legendary gets you a the legendary echoes that were going like sounds along with the miniatures and then additional stretch goals along with the wooden meeples. Now, why is this important? I think this is going to be very interesting to see what happens. They sent an email out today that announced that their web store is going to be um, available on November 30. Now, why is this interesting? Well, look, you have your standard, which I just told you was $69.99 on Kickstarter, and they have gone sort of the opposite way and sort of flipped things around. This is $30 higher. Then you get the limited edition cover is going to cost you additionally 50 bucks more from the, what it would have cost you during the Kickstarter. The deluxe is going to cost $50 more than what it would during the Kickstarter because then in the Kickstarter it was $99.99. It's going to cost you $60 more to get the limited cover. Now the legendary, the legendary, let's, let's go back here a second. The legendary is $139. The legendary here is $199. You're getting $199. That's insane for one game with uh, the, the size of this as much as you're getting with it. They're saying there's limited copies already. So I, I have to wonder if this was like Midara. When Midara first was printed, they added so much stuff or production costs overran by so much that they're having now to upcharge significantly. Midara did it on the second Kickstarter. Dwellings appears to be doing it at retail. So I'm not sure if they're really just trying to recoup money or they really think it's gonna sell at this price point based on FOMO. I don't know. So I'll be interested to see how fast this sells out because it will sell out. I mean, a, a thousand copies is a thousand copies, but this price point, I have a hard time swallowing this. So I think it's important to note and to track something like this because if it does, the fear is that this may become the new reality through web stores if you do not pick up on Kickstarter, which is a slippery slope for me. Next up is Kingdom Rush, Rift in Time, the tabletop version of the very well-known tower defense game on mobile apps where it got its start by Lucky Duck Games. They raised over a million dollars. They are looking at delivering. Hopefully, um, they just sent out an update in, uh, today, I believe it was, saying that they hope to get it sooner, but it now it looks like it's the end of November because you can see that the two boxes sort of on the page here, Fighter Queen expansion, that all backers are getting as the exclusive expansion. They got packaged separately, at least for the US or the English speaking portion of things. And so they are actually having to hold the original game and they're taking comments on whether or not they should allow the retail to go uh, before the backers because in a lot of campaigns you hear them say that we're going to make sure one of the reasons you should back us now is because we're going to get it to you sooner. Well, I, personally, I don't care, but I know it's often a divisive issue in these times for some reason. People care about getting it first. And so even though I'm getting more, I... Yeah, anyway, it's a side note. But um, so it's looking like it's the, the delivery isn't even going to begin until the end of next month. So it was supposed to be about right now, but it's going to be put off probably at least by about six weeks. Most people, I'd say, probably in the U.S. are probably going to be getting it in the middle of December from that side of things. So at least it's before the holiday. I'm a big fan. I think, again, there's not really a whole lot of tower defense out there. I think this is done in a unique way. So I'm really hyped to see what it looks like and what shows up from that side of things. Now, next, we have a couple from... One of my favorite companies, um, I'm a little displeased in how it's run at, at times with the, the order of things, but you've got a couple projects now coming very soon in the next probably two or three months, all of these delivering. You have Battlecon Unleashed, the final updated Ultimate Battlecon edition, delivering right now actually. So um, I should have my copy anytime. I was not a original backer, but I got in on it late. Level 99 is just throwing them out left after right. Millennium Blades Collusion, the latest and the most recent final expansion for the Millennium Blades, which is the CCG simulator meta Magic the Gathering type game. This should be delivering hopefully by the end of the year as well. The reason I, I was a little irked is because this one funded before the Battlecon. It also funded before Bullet, which is another a level 99 game that should be delivering before the end of 2020 as well. I, I just, I want more of it. It doesn't hit the table very often because it's so <laughs> nuanced and it's basically taking your Magic the Gathering crowd, creating a game of it, and then creating a game within a game of it. And unless you have people that are familiar with it, it's going to be a little overwhelming, but it's a great game. It's highly underrated. Check it out if you have a chance. You can pick it up on the secondary market because a lot of people, again, didn't realize what they were getting when they got it. So the availability is relatively good. It's a massive game. There's too much stuff in it at times, uh, but it's great. Next up, uh, one of the most anticipated games of the year. This is Aetherfields. Now, Awakened Realms, they're putting stuff out left and right. This is what you should know. 
is it is starting to deliver, I think, in the next month or so. The review copies are already out there. I think Tom Bassel's review is already out. This is a cooperative dream world deck builder legacy-esque miniature game. And I threw a lot of terms in there, but it is looking amazing. I think the early hype is that this hype is actually real in terms of the depth and the quality of game that is actually here. I know there's always a concern with miniature heavy games. Now, the one thing I like about Awakened Realms though is they add miniatures on top of things. They don't make them where you have to get them necessarily in that sense. You're getting some, but they're not getting one of everything and having to pay the up cost even if you don't want them. So I give them kudos for not making you get all of the extra miniatures every single time. Now, you're going to get double content in this. The one downside is, since there are many expansions that they go along with this and that the expansions they give backers say in during the process of the Kickstarter campaign is that the expansions are not ready to go alongside of the core box. So just like Tainted Grail, there's going to be two waves. And if, if you can wait until the second wave and you don't want to pay extra shipping, you get it all at once. But otherwise, the first wave is going to be coming soon, and it looks amazing. I love the art. Your stretch goals are doubling the content just by backing it. It's going to be great. I'm super excited about it. Deck building, legacy. I will probably do a dedicated review to this at some point. Last up, and this one has been so, so long in waiting. Uh, Jasco Games, in combination with Angry Joe, I don't know who he was before all of this, Street Fighter the Miniatures game. Now, this is supposedly delivering again before the end of the year in the next month or so. It captures a one-on-one -on -one battler like the 2D arcade in a 3D version. This was big controversy when it came out because what they did was they offered pre-painted miniatures as part of the basic pledge. And this has never really been done to any significant degree with any significant quality. And there's about four different versions of Street Fighter. The early reviews on the Discord from backers, not from people who you know were paid anything, but people who are playtesting it online like Tabletop Simulator that other companies are using ad nauseum, they went to this probably you know almost a year ago because it's been delayed that long. So you're looking at a year and a half delay, but it's looking really positive. And the art is spectacular. These miniatures, these are renders, but the actual pictures themselves look amazing as well. I'm not going to pull those up, but you can look at them up for yourself. And if this game looks as well as it does now and has the reviews that come out as as high as I think they may, they have two other very, very well-known IPs that they are going to be trying to follow up on this and strike while the iron is hot. The first one is Mortal Kombat, which again is Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. It was like you were on one side or the other. It was Nintendo versus PlayStation, Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat. The second one is actually, and they've said Mortal Kombat is going to be the next one. The second one, which I wish they'd swap the order of, Dragon Ball Z. Oh my gosh, Dragon Ball Z. This, this is, oh my gosh. I'm going to be putting out a video in the next week or two that talks about my top 10 IPs I wish that would be made into tabletop games. One of those videos is going to be of manga or animation. Um, and so Dragon Ball Z is right up there. And so I cannot wait for that. But they are waiting. They have said they are not going to launch Mortal Kombat until they deliver all of this. So I give them props. They have had a lot of issues. And I think this is the biggest concern I have with any of these properties that are now being translated, even like Darkest Dungeons, which is on Kickstarter right now, is the companies that own these IPs in the first place have to sign off on everything. Sony had to sign off on everything. So if you can deal with that, great. Because I think end product that is well worth the wait. And I'm excited because I like this type of game if you can't tell by the other stuff that I've already mentioned in my other videos and even this video alone. So those are the big ones that I'm aware of. We'll see what else comes out. So we have a few other tidbits tonight before I wrap this up. First up, mentioning Steve Forge Games earlier in the uh, video, we have their newest game, Bard Song, which is coming up on Kickstarter November 10. November 10 is going to be a pretty popular day. I'm going to be talking about another game coming out on that same day as a campaign in a minute. This is Steam Forge's latest game. It's their take on the RPG dungeon crawler with a twist. As you can see here, they've taken the tropes and sort of given them their own slight variation. They've taken their own variation on things, and there's a mage, what they call a light weaver, a rogue, 
and they've got the night feather, which is sort of what you're seeing in the picture here, which is a twist on that same sort of concept. Then you've got your Dawn Guard, your Stoneheart, your Fighter. Basically, the gist of it is that you are one of these characters, anywhere from one to five players. And the title of the game comes from the fact that your deeds and exploits are being sung throughout the realms after you do them. Now, they say straight off that it's going to be a procedurally generated uh, tile-based dungeon, as you can see here. Now, they call it roguelike because I, I guess the assumption is like the video games. If you die, your progress is reset, but your paths and choices within the dungeon will have immediate ramifications and consequences even within the encounter that you're in currently. As I mentioned earlier in the video, why I think this is important is because if they are able to parlay the most recent success in Horizon Zero Dawn, as well as Devil May Cry, which is currently being shipped right now. Before then, I think you could see a lot more faith than that was bestowed upon them from those two projects. But I think it's going to be interesting to see how divisive this is. Again, this is a little bit different of a take than they've done in the last several projects, as this is their own unique property. This is not an IP that they are getting from somewhere else, as they are with the following game, which is going to be Mr. Hunter. So we'll have to see what variations and what makes this stand out from all of the other ilk and dungeon crawlers on the market already. I think they can be innovative. I think they've learned some of their lessons. Hopefully it, it's paid out in this campaign and we can see it right up front. Next up is launching the same day is Burn Cycle from the guys over at Chip Theory. And you know that there's gonna be a lot of hype behind this. You know it's uh, gonna fund within a couple minutes. They have those uh, pre-launch five or 10 pledge levels that get every product in the future. And this is your twist on a dystopian universe. Instead of being the humans who are enslaved by the robots, the robots have actually saved the humans from extinction. And now they are being enslaved by the humans. And it's a twist as you are the robots trying to form a resistance to get out from under the thumb of the evil human corporations. There's action programming. There's building, there's a lot of strategy. There's not really a whole lot that's known about the game currently, but you know that you're gonna be paying for the quality that Chip Theory Games does. And I wonder uh, what sort of unique mechanisms that are gonna make this game stand out as well. I have not been a big fan of Chip Theory Games in the past, but I will always give their products a look because I think they put out high quality products. They just don't always suit my tastes as they do some other people's. I'm gonna do a quick spiel digital roundup, a few of the big games that you're gonna be hearing about. Cloud Age uh, from Feister, who did Maracaibo. Um, this is coming out in the very near future. I think you can pre-order it or maybe even it's in stores now. It's more of an engine builder and deck builder with resource management. There was a company named Cloud that came and burned all of the oil reserves and burned down all the forests to sort of destabilize the environment. And so now you are traveling on these large airships, as you can see in the background here, trying to come up with a better life, trying to find a better situation. They talk about an innovative sleeve mechanism that's going to allow uh, resource gathering in an unusual way. And you're trying to predict which cloud covered terrain is going to give you the best resources in advance. Um, I don't know. This is not my typical type of game. I'm not sure what to make of it. I think there's going to be better people out there going to be analyzing it, but I'm going to keep a close watch on it because I am also not opposed to a game like this that is sometimes falling outside of my wheelhouse. Next up is Hallertau. Uh, this is another Rosenberg game. Hallertau is the big area of hops in Bavaria. You've got your worker placement with a two field type of rotation mechanic. Again, worker placement is not my forte, uh, but it's on everyone's radar. It's already on the hotness. So if that is your type of game, uh, you should probably go and check it out already. You have God's Love Dinosaurs. You are a god designing a new ecosystem, drafting, tile laying. The early reviews on this game coming out of Spiel Digital are very, very positive already. I know very little about it, but it's a game that I am definitely going to be looking into as something that's going to be able to hit the table relatively easily, but has a high amount of strategy and replayability. Last one is Praga Kapt Reni. This is the sequel from the designer of Underwater Cities. And so right there, the pedigree and the bar are already set pretty high. There's a rule book on Board Game Geek, so you can check it out. It's a twist on resource management and building in Prague back several centuries ago, where you are trying to build up your city through various mechanisms that are interlocking. I'm only familiar with Underwater Cities. I have not played it, it has not gotten to my table yet. But again, if you like that sort of game, this is setting the bar very high. Time will tell and more reviews will definitely let us know. Again, another one, I'm going to wait and see sort of where the chips lie. Very last item, I promise. Ori Flam, if you're not familiar with this, this is the winner of the UK 2020 Games Expo New Card Game of the Year, as well as the Jude Lam 
which is basically the French version of the game of the year, one of the categories in it being the grand public category. This was the winner of 2020, as I mentioned. Now, why is this important? Is because the sequel slash standalone expansion is coming out of Oriflame Ablaze. It's news and noteworthy because this is a game of for three to five players with some take that where you are lining up characters as hidden information with bluffing and betting, sort of like if you were to take coup and place your cards down on the table in a row and they caused interactions based on who they're next to or who's on either side of them or how much money is below them. And so it's flying under the radar. I think it's vastly underrated and it's worth checking out not only the base game, but this new expansion. It's going to be on people's radar. It's going to surprise. You heard it first here. So stay classy out there. Let me know what you think. Like, subscribe it, share it. I'm trying to just get more exposure to anyone under the sun that is interested in these things. So I'd love it if you even want to leave me a comment, whether you like what I'm doing, you don't like what I'm doing, just let me know what you think. Let me know what you want to see. Okay. Thanks, guys. See you next time.